Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, the Minister with Responsibility for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning and Natural Resources and Cooperatives. Have Mr. Tommy Descart, I just get to know him, <laughs> who is the Chief Economist in the Department of Economic Development, Transport, House, Housing, Urban Renewal, and the Civil Aviation. We also have Dr. Oria King, who is our Director of Agri Services in the Department of Agriculture. We also have our Permanent Secretary in the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives. And of course, we have Glenn Simon, who is also from that, from um, the Department of Economic Development. You also have, of course, our communication unit, and of course, Miss Anno, who is a farmer, the recipient, who is a recipient. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'd like to welcome you here to the handing over, official handing over ceremony of water tanks to farmers as part of the recovery and resilience plan. This is an island-wide initiative initiated by the Department of Economic Development, Transport, Housing, Urban Renewal, and the Civil Aviation under the DVRP project in conjunction with the Department of Agriculture. Uh, for those of you who probably don't know, we are at Labon, and Labon have a history, a, a very long history when it comes to agriculture. Um, I remember when I joined the ministry, I was told about um, the, uh, ex ex the experimental station at Union had experimental, experimental plots at Labon, and at the time, one of the feature, feature, featuring crops was cotton, and uh, they did a lot of cotton here at the time. Um, of course, it's a very diverse area. I know there are lots of livestock farmers, cattle, pigs, and small stock. There's also involved in root crop production, especially cassava production. I know of one farmer who's, who's also doing cassava processing and foreign is being exported to Martinique. Uh, we also have vegetable production, and if you look at the ecological conditions in Labon, um, it lends itself to the production of cucubits, which is pumpkin, um, the melons, and cantaloupe, and also cucumber. I remember also the, the ministry has been involved in assisting farmers in a number of areas, even, even in the feeder road uh, program. In fact, going down by Mr. Anu, I remember going down there, and they, they, they had done some work down there some years ago, um, concreting that road in that area. In, in the production of, of vegetables, Water is a necessity, irrigation water. And especially we are going, the ministry's program, which is the Fruit and Vegetable Import Substitution Project, the seven crops, which I'm sure that um, Ms. Anu is part, part and parcel of. I'm sure when it is dry up here, one of the problems you have is irrigation, okay? And that, that's where water harvesting becomes very, very important. And the tank, I suppose, is, is, is um, come to use at this point, which is important for you at this juncture. So again, I'd like to welcome you all to this official handing over of the tank. I'll now call, call on um, Mr. Tommy Descart, who is the Chief Economist in the Department of Economic Affairs, um, Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport, and Civil Division, to give a few remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Sidney, and permit me to adopt the protocol already established. Uh, today, we are very, very happy uh, from the Department of Economic Development, Transport, and Civil Aviation to partner with the Ministry of Agriculture in donating over 190 water tanks to farmers across the length and breadth of St. Lucia. This initiative is particularly important for us as it forms part of our medium-term development strategy and the seven crop initiative that Mr. Sidney would have mentioned uh, is a key strategy uh, under that, uh, the agriculture pillar in our medium term development strategy. So we see this initiative as being uh, complementing this strategy. But more importantly, we, we, in the onset of COVID, the Department of Economic Development and the Ministry of Finance uh, embarked on the development of an economic recovery and resilience plan. Uh, and this plan was essentially 
to help uh, the economy, um, help livelihoods, persons that are vulnerable. And in crafting the plan, we saw it fit that we needed to include the Ministry of Agriculture because one, while we face the pandemic, we also face a climate crisis. Um, and climate impacts farmers um, in, in many ways. Uh, you, we know the increasing intensity of natural um, the, um, hazards and, and, and the frequency, but also in terms of the drought conditions and so on. So we are very happy today um, that we are launching this initiative. We also want to make the point that um, this complements um, the, uh, we would have provided a, a 382 water tanks to other institutions, uh, NEMO, health facilities, um, um, especially in the event of a natural disaster, to have water on hand. And so in total, as part of the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, we would have donated close to 580 water tanks on island. Added to that, every water tank that has been donated here is actually produced on island. And so we are also seeing the, the sort of stimulation of the manufacturing sector and the associated employment that could provide, um, particularly during this very difficult time. And so on behalf of the leadership of the Department of Economic Development uh, in the Minister of uh, Honorable Guy Joseph and my permanent secretary, Mr. Claudius Emmanuel, I would like to see that we are certainly very happy um, to partner with the Ministry of Agriculture. I also want to recognize the World Bank because the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project is a World Bank funded project and the World Bank agreed to repurpose these resources away from other initiatives that was initially planned, but recognizing that as a result of COVID that the government would need to repurpose um, some of the resources to what is the most pressing need at the time. So on behalf of the Department of Economic De Development, I would like to thank um, the, um, the Ministry of Agriculture. I would also like to thank um, Ms. Arnold, who I am certainly happy you know, to see a young female farmer um, participating. And it, it, it's an indication that farming uh, is in good hands if we could have young persons participating in farming. So with these short remarks, I would like to thank, um, thank everyone. And uh, over to you, Mr. Master Sermons. Thank you, Mr. Descartes, for those words. And of course, I'm sure that you'll continue to help the farming community with, with more tanks, because I suppose at this <laughs> juncture, you have farmers who, who are hearing about it uh, for the first time, yeah. and then they, they want to be on board. And so I, I, I'm thinking here, you know, uh, my minister will definitely make a plea to get some more tanks. <laughs> <laughs> at this juncture, I definitely would like to call on Ms. Kenish, Kenisha Anu. Um, I know of the, the, I don't know if he's a father, Mr. Ando, all right, um, some years ago, who is farming not too far away at the bottom, and he, of course he has been farming for years and he's still consistent. Um, so I, I realize that he, play, he played a, a, a good role in, in, in initiating you to come into the fore of agriculture. So I, hope, I am hoping that you'll continue and to do a good job. So I'll ask you to come in and make a few remarks. With protocols already being established, on behalf of Ministry of Agriculture, alongside the government of St. Lucia, as well as Bryson Company, I would like to sincerely thank them for providing me with this water tank, as well as everyone else. It will be of great use, especially for the upcoming dry season, with proper storage of water, being able to manage the crops, and also my poultry farm. It is, uh, I'll say, um, I'm happy that young people are being part of this program and they all show like, they all are be able to help us, push us way forward in the agriculture sector. Once again, thank you. Thank you, Kenisha, for those supportive words and I wish you well and I'm sure the, the extension officers will continue to give the support that you deserve to ensure that the, that the water storage is put into good use. And not only um, having the water stored, but again, with such a scarce resource, you need to, the application of water needs to be done um, correctly. So you have to use the, the correct methodology in terms of um, the application of the water, as it were. 
At this juncture, I'll, without further ado, I'll call on our Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, the Minister responsible for Agriculture, Fisheries, Fiscal Planning, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives, to say a few words. Thank you very much, Mr. Sidney. I want to recognize my peers in the Department of Agriculture, my direct, Director of Agricultural Services, Mr. Tommy Descott, representing the Minister, and of course, the department you're working with. Um, and most importantly, our farmer. Uh, you made an observation, Mr. Descartes, I want to echo that sentiment, that when I was told and I was directed and instructed <laughs> to be here this morning to participate in that ceremony and I was told I'm coming to Labon, I could understand why Labon, because of course we'll all appreciate that the, our farmers in Labon um, over the years would have been experiencing dry weather, significant um, shortage as it pertains to the availability of water. But I never envisaged that I will be coming to a young farmer's farm. And I'm very delighted that I'm not only a young farmer, but a female young farmer is part and parcel of, of that initiative, that program um, that has been implemented between our two ministries, agriculture and economic development. Let me say on behalf of the ministry and of course on behalf of the many farmers who have um, benefited from that program, thank you very much to the minister, the PS, and of course, all those who are involved in um, approaching the, the bank and asking them to repurpose the resources to give support to our farmers. As we all know, um, climate change is a challenge for agriculture. Um, as a ministry, we have done a number of initiatives as it pertains to assisting our farmers, of course, those of course, those who are very close to water source as far as irrigation is concerned. But our experience here is telling us that we have a number of farmers who are not fortunate to be cultivating near water sources. And here it is, when we come up here, we see how diversified this farm is. And despite the fact that um, our young farmer, Miss Amu, is not close to a water source, um, we are very impressed to see what has been accomplished here. Um, and of, I'm happy that um, we have identified her in donating this tank. And like she said, we'll assist um, her initiative as far as continue to feed ourselves. I must say, as a government, and I'm happy you recognize that, Ms. Amu, as a government, we have, under my leadership, we have done a lot to assist our farmers, especially our small farmers. I remembered we had what we call a youth in agricultural program. And my experience working with young farmers, they have two major challenges. And I say major, marketing, which I'll speak to in a while, is another challenge. But two major challenges. One, the availability of resources for them to be able to um, invest in the initiatives that they have decided to go get involved in. And the other one is land. And that is why when we develop the youth in agricultural program and we approach the CARICOM Development Fund to get grant funding of $3.2 million. That was the mindset we have. How can we assist our young farmers who are interested in agriculture and who we can you know, educate and train in new technology? Because what we are realizing is that our agricultural land is diminishing, our population is increasing, our age of our farmers are getting older and older, and we need to introduce young farmers into agriculture. But how we assist them? And that was the mindset and the thinking behind the initiative of the Youth in Agricultural Program. I don't know if you have you benefited from the Youth in Agricultural Program, but the intention at the time was first, the first phase of the Youth in Agricultural Program was to identify agricultural land belonging to government. And what we did, we had identified five areas in St. Lucia where we had agricultural land belonging to government to um, to, to assist those young persons who indicated that they were interested in agriculture and to place them on these lands. In fact, in the first phase, we're looking at 150 young farmers. The second phase was, like we're experiencing now, young farmers who have the land but need the support. And unfortunately, um, we have not seen the type of success we would have liked to see as it pertains to this, this project, not because of our fault, but because of how it was implemented in the absence of a United Workers' Party government. But we are back and we are going to continue to assist our young farmers. The other area that is very critical, and I heard you went to the market very early this morning, 
right? What we want is, <laughs> we don't want our farmers to go by the market and to be selling. We want our farmers to spend more time on the farm. And that is why, as a government, we decided that there is need to restructure the St. Lucia Marketing Board so at least farmers can enter into a contractual arrangement. We want what we, we are advocating, what we are advising farmers is that let us, in this new dispensation moving forward, change the traditional way we're doing things. Our production should be market-led. And what I mean by that is that you have a contract, you know what is it that the, 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 the supermarket wants, you sign a contract to the supermarket, you know the type of production they need. With the technical advice of the Ministry of Agriculture, we can advise you how many acres to put in the, in the ground to satisfy the weekly demand for that supermarket. And that is what we are trying to encourage among our young farmers. Of course, the traditional market will be there, the cashless market will be there because there are persons who just like, it's a form of socializing for them. But when we want to have this business approach in agriculture, we are advising our farmers, do not go and get up one morning. And I'm, I can put my hat on and say the same thing. Get up one morning and say, I put in cucumbers in the ground. Right now, cucumbers, I was walking this morning, I heard farmers shouting, Minister, Minister, cucum, um, this food, this food, the dollar. <laughs> you know? Overproduction. Because of the traditional way we are cultivating and we need to change that. So I'm happy that um, you are involved. I'm, I'm happy that our extension office can continue working with you to, to, to give you the type of advice, technical advice, give you our support, financial and otherwise, so that is you can be a role model for our young female farmers. So I want to say again, and um, Mr. Master Ceremonies alluded to it, that whilst we receive 190 tanks, we are very grateful for this. And, but I'm, and I can tell you, we have opened up Pandora box. <laughs> because, because there are a number of other persons who are calling, parliamentary representatives who are calling officers and saying, look, my pa went tank, give me papa hand tank, you know, give me sa hand performance over sa. So Mr. Descartes, I want you to, to appreciate this and of course to see what can be done. I know resources are limited and then I understand that. Um, but let's see if we can um, at least scratch some more resources somewhere to see if you can get some more tanks. Especially knowing, like you said, it has been manufactured locally, and the whole COVID environment that we're under right now is quite of creating employment, stimulating economic activities in the country. So I want to see to Mr. Bryce, who is the, the manufacturer of the tank, his company. Thank you very much. I'm sure there's some arrangements within him and your, your department. I want to say to the Department of Economic Development, through you, Mr. Descartes, thank you very much for considering in your repurposing of resources, considering agriculture. And I want to say to the young farmer here, continue the good works. Feel free to contact your extension officer, work closely with your extension officer. I and Mr. Sidney can tell you that we are there to help. My experience working with farmers, we are there to help. Don't be afraid to contact your extension officer. Don't be afraid to, to express openly what your challenges are, honestly, respectfully what your challenges are. And I'm sure with that type of relationship, um, you, can, you can only advance. So I want to say thank you very much for this opportunity. And I'm really looking forward for further collaboration between our two ministries. Thank you.